Modern JavaScript comes with a neat operator called nullish coalescing to provide a default value in the presence of a nullish that is null or undefined values. Let's say we want to initialize a message variable based on a provided input. People often incorrectly use the boolean or operator for this purpose, but it has an issue where it does more than what you expect. It does work fine if the value is null or undefined. So here you can see that if null or undefined is used, it fall back to the default value. And for other strings, it seems to work fine. For example, here it uses the provided input instead of the fallback default value. But the issue is that in addition to null and undefined, the or operator actually works on the concept of falsy values. So an empty string will also fall back to the default value. In addition to strings, another example is numbers as well. So null and undefined, sure the boolean operator does what you expect. And for valid numbers, it works except when you provide the number zero. So the or operator is not the same as a nullish check. It is more like a falsy check. If you wanted to only include nullish values null and undefined, traditionally we would need to do an explicit nullish check combined with the ternary operator. Fortunately, JavaScript now comes with the nullish coalescing operator that does exactly that. So if the left hand side is null or undefined, it goes to the default value. And for everything else, whether it is empty or non empty, as long as it is a string, it uses the provided value. And we can repeat this example with numbers as well. If the left hand side is null or undefined, then the right hand side default value is used. For everything else, like the number 10 or the number 0, it really doesn't matter. It's not null or undefined. And therefore, the left hand side value is what is used. JavaScript is fairly resilient when it comes to undefined properties, except traditionally it hasn't been resilient enough. To demonstrate that, consider a simple Jamie object that has a name and a cat member, and then the cat itself is an object that has a name and a toys member which points to an array. And of course, we can use various access methods, for example, to access the cat name or the cat's first toy. However, we can also access properties that do not exist. For example, Jamie does not have a dog and the JavaScript runtime will not throw an error and simply give us back the special value undefined. However, if we overextend our welcome and try to read the property off of that undefined, then the JavaScript runtime will throw an error and exit the stack. Similarly, get address is not a property that exists on Jamie and if we try to get it, the JavaScript runtime gives us undefined but doesn't throw an error. However, then if we try to invoke it, then the JavaScript runtime suddenly says, hey, you're doing something wrong. And the same for cat.hobbies as well. The cat has no hobbies. JavaScript runtime is fine. It gives us undefined. But if we try to access like its first hobby, then again, the JavaScript runtime will throw an error and exit the program. Modern JavaScript comes with the optional chaining operator that allows you to safely use nullish values without JavaScript throwing an error. Consider the simple data structure for people. We have John with a name and an address. And then we have Jane that only has a name and has not provided us with her address. We have the simple log person function that takes a person object and is designed to log the person name and the person country based on their address. Now, of course, this function is going to work perfectly fine when we pass in John. We see the name John and the country France. However, if we log Jane, the JavaScript runtime is going to throw an error because Jane does not have an address and therefore we are trying to look up country from an undefined address. Now, of course, we can handle nullish, null or undefined values explicitly by first checking, hey, does the person have an address? If they don't, then just return undefined. Otherwise, read the person.address.country. And now instead of throwing an error and exiting the program, we get a more reasonable log of undefined. Fortunately, with modern JavaScript, we don't need to write ternaries like this anymore because we can actually use the optional chaining operator where instead of simple dot, we use question mark dot. And in terms of behavior, it is exactly the same. If person or address is going to be null or undefined, then we're going to get undefined. Otherwise, we are going to get address dot country. We could see the value of this operator even right now, but it becomes even more significant when we have optional of optional of optional. For example, if person could potentially be undefined as well, we simply add the question mark dot over there. And now we have a much neater syntax than the nested ternary that you might need to write otherwise. Of course, if the value is going to be there, this is going to have no effect. So we could pretty much go crazy if we wanted to. And we still get the same program output as we did before. The JavaScript optional chaining operator actually supports three syntax forms. So in addition to property access, it supports index access and function invocation. Let's take a trip down memory lane and visit our old friend Jamie again. And of course, we can look up Jamie's cat name or the cat's toys. 
But as we know, Jamie does not have a dog and thanks to optional chaining, we can look up the dog's name and instead of throwing an error, the JavaScript runtime gives us back a polite undefined. Similarly, Jamie does not have a get address function and we can actually use optional chaining question mark dot to optionally invoke the method that doesn't exist and again instead of throwing an error the javascript runtime gives us the polite undefined jamie's cat does have toys however she doesn't have hobbies so hobbies is undefined and we can actually use the optional chaining question mark dot along with an index operator to look up a member from an array that potentially doesn't exist and of course all of this works as you would expect without any error as we can see in the demo console I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as always thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.